If I recall correctly, I said anybody that wants to go is welcome, just get in, sit down, and hang on. And Becky hopped in the car, and we hit Charlotte. I didn't know exactly where I was going. I've been sharp many times. I didn't know what's the side of the didn't know anything about it. And we were going up the road with phone calls back and forth to figure out what was happening. Ann was trapped in the car that had to cut it out. She was still conscious. She was able to tell the young lady I got my cell phone number at that point. And we headed towards the side. From my standpoint, I didn't know what was coming, what to expect, except that it was bad. Um, Michelle was calling me back and forth, and she was all wound up, but she was on the phone banging me out. And life changed. But because of faith and a fellowship with the family of Holy Springs, we got through. Went through a lot of stuff. <coughs> but I had some one that really experienced the pain and the anguish of all the physical things as well as the mental and emotional. You see up here all kinds of stuff. This, this table's all good stuff. Get well cards and well wishes and all that. But here's you know, the torture classes and something. But I'm going to sit down and leave that to you, but before I do, let's have a word for it. <coughs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this time to share this evening. I pray that this time will be good for Anne and good for all of us that she shares with us from her experience. And Lord, we know that you're with us in this time just as you walk with us through that, that valley of the shadow of death back in March of 2009. You brought us to it, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for a loving church that surrounded us with honors of love and support and helped us get through it. For your peace and your presence power of your spirit that brought us through. Now, Lord, be with us tonight. Help us to enjoy this time together. Help Ann to share with us and help us at a time of fellowship as we endorse my spirit and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
went up a hill around a curve, and there was a monster coming at me. It was just two great big eyes and dirt blowing up behind it. It could have been a fire-breathing dragon, the way it looked to me. And I remember stomping the brake and screaming. And Michelle said she can still hear that scream. She heard me. And uh, witnesses say my car went 20 to 40 feet in the air, turned around, and came back down. I do remember having the feeling of turning, and it was like I was standing on the stairs in my living room, looking out across my living room. And you know, if you've ever been homesick, you know that feeling. And that feeling just hit me. And the next thing I knew, there was a girl at my window, and I had a horrible pain in my chest. I was struggling to breathe. I could barely talk. And I said, call my husband. And I gave her the number. And I don't know how she remembered it the first time I said it, but she called Steve, and she stayed with me. And I was aware of people coming to the window, but she wouldn't let them take me out. And I'm so thankful she did it because I probably would be able to stand up today because I was so broken. But she stayed with me and talked to me. The EMTs got there and they had to cut me out of the car. Um, they put something over me. I remember saying, We're going to cover you up. And I could hear the song. And uh, they took the door off my car and got me out. They put me on a gurney. And I was just like, it didn't seem like I was very far off the ground. But I could feel chunks of stuff on the ground. I guess it was glass. But they rolled me over, and I could hear a helicopter. And I thought, I've never ridden in a helicopter. <laughs> 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 And there was a guy in the back with me and the pilot. And uh, the pilot said, what's her condition? And he said, it's poor. I don't think she's going to make it. And that's the last thing I heard until I woke up in the ICU probably two weeks later. <coughs> um, but I did tell the EMT I had contact. Because I knew if I didn't tell them, they might not know. And that worried me. <laughs> so I was like, contact And he said, what are you talking about? I said, I contact. But the pain was getting worse, so I didn't try to talk too much. Uh, Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And he did. Psalm 46 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. And you can believe it. You can believe it. In the ICU, um, I was mostly out. Um, I didn't know really what all was wrong with me. Um, according to the admitting diagnosis, I had bilateral femoral neck fracture pelvic fractures, L1, L5, transverse prostate <coughs> fracture. That's the back. Uh, two through five, posterior right rib fracture. L2, four, six through 12, posterior rib, rib fractures. Um, eternal 
fracture, right tibia, fibula open fracture, left forearm, both bone fracture, bilateral pneumothoraxes, liver laceration, and a bladder laceration. Um, I didn't know any of that. I was, as Louis Rizard said, enjoying the morphine. And uh, I had a lot of really crazy dreams. I dreamed I was uh, part of the <laughs> They would roll me around on my hospital <coughs> in the circuit. Uh, I just knew some of my doctors there were people that had grown up with Michelle and Allison. And I thought one of my doctors was a guy who was now in the ministry, who was at the church at St. Paul when we were there. Um, I went to a convenience store. <laughs> they rolled me down the hill. And we had Cheetos and Coke Slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And there were these big columns in the ICU between me and the desk where doctors and nurses were. And I could afford those columns were full of frozen fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted a bag of pineapple so bad. <laughs> And our friend that Stephen Becky took me to Truth Con College to see a play and they left me. <laughs> <laughs> there I was in the hospital bed. It poured down rain and they left me. <laughs> I had a lot of scary dreams too. And I'm not going to tell you about them because I don't want to think about them. Um, they were horrible. And I hope they were dreams. Really hope they were. Um, about the beach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, at one point, I know I heard him say something about um, plastic surgery. They did plastic <coughs> surgery on my foot. And uh, they took big pieces of skin off each leg to uh, put on my foot because it was in really bad shape. And I really thought that they had flown me to the Virgin Islands to have my surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I thought I was there in Virgin Islands. And one of my friends from elementary school, from first grade, came to see me and Steve said, she just lives 20 minutes from here. And I thought, wow, how did she get to move to Paradise? <laughs> and then Colleen and Bill were there, and I thought, wow, they just flew everybody down here for my surgery. <laughs> I was really excited, and then I found out I wasn't anywhere. <laughs> but I was in and out of consciousness. And when I when I could think, now I, I couldn't talk at all. Um, I had a tracheotomy, and I was. I guess I was on a respirator during part of that time. Respirator, ventilator, before, ventilator. before the trick. Okay. And so I would try to remember scripture and hymns in my head. That was what I did to entertain my mind when I was awake. And then Allison got me an iPod and brought it in. She, uh, she helped me out there. Um, Steve and all our family was in the waiting room. Steve, and, Steve never left me except to go to the hotel or to the house that the Moravian Church provided for them to stay in. He was there the whole time and never left. Allison left twice. Uh, huh? She didn't want to go. She didn't want to go. I kept asking Elsa, what happened to me? I was mouthed, and she could bring lids. Think about that for a minute. But uh, she could bring lids, and I said, what happened? She said, you had red. I said, another one? <laughs> <laughs> I could have seen it. I was in the hospital from 
on that same <laughs> But the nurses were so good to me. I think it was probably the night before I was moved out of the unit. They spent hours. One of them went to the drugstore nearby somewhere and bought a lot of paper And they combed and washed and washed and combed for hours because my hair hadn't been washed in almost three weeks. So it was me. And they were so good and were so sweet. Sean, as some of you know, is a big kid. And the first time I was awake, when he came in to see me, he said, guess what? He was leaning up. And I said, what? He said, I gave you a bath. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm still alive. <laughs> Becky stayed with me one night, and I was terrified to be by myself at night. And I kept looking over there at her. <laughs> I couldn't talk, but I came out of it. And I was so afraid she'd go, go to sleep or leave me. And my cousin stayed with me, and he was a dude. And Bruce stuff at me. <laughs> Every morning they came to take a test day. And those people terrified me. I thought they were just being mean. I didn't know they really had to do that. Uh, let's see. Alice finally brought me a bell. Once they had in the hand, she brought me a bell <laughs> that you put on a bicycle. <laughs> so I did that for a while. And I had a ball that I was trying to use with this hand. But I could throw it at people. <laughs>
set me, he set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Wait for it, pointed me out. You know what They came in on Wednesday and said, she's got to go by Friday. And I had nowhere to go. And I still couldn't move anything but this. And I could swallow that fix stuff in that song. And it was very scary. And I knew where I was headed. And that tore me up. Because I thought if I ever get there, I won't go home. So, my family, being the strong willed people, <laughs> got on the phone. And Michelle started calling. She called 56 places within a 200 mile radius trying to find a place that would take me. Finally, she even called Cecil Clifton, who was the attorney in Dakota. Now he's the corporate counsel for Neil Pruitt. And Neil Pruitt on the just out here in her home, north of Atlanta, well, south of Atlanta. But uh, they were going to take me. They would find a place for me at Dakota Nursing. But I, was, I just couldn't go. I mean, I, I cried and cried. And that was really dumb. Like it, but I didn't want to go to Texas. So finally, Michelle found Landmark Hospital in Athens. And we actually knew the administrator. Ken Merritt used to be the administrator at Stevens County, and we knew him. We'd actually been to parties with him. Assistant Bush. Oh, assistant administrator. And his brother, his good friend, his sister Cody, and he said, absolutely, we won. So they got me ready, got me really built up good. And this time we got to go on an airplane. Angel, Angel White, out of South Georgia. Griffin, yeah. Uh, they're all volunteers, the nurses, the pilots. All you pay for is fuel and airport fees. And so they flew me from Lake Forest to, to, to Athens. And uh, I told Steve, the Steve said he was going with me. I said, fine. But you can't ask questions. <laughs> We'd already been through that with the <coughs> And so I didn't, I didn't want them paying attention to him and not watching where they're going. But they did fly over to the stadium to, to let him see where the bulldogs play from the air. And we got to the airport <coughs> and uh, stood a childhood friend of Steve. She's also my friend, too. He was the sister to Boy Todd's wife. So it's actually related to y'all. She was, yeah, Steve Chit was his daughter, Beverly. Um, she was standing there with welcome home boys. Huge, but I don't know how I didn't lift her off. Anyway. <laughs> she had a big armful of balloons. And there was a, an ambulance waiting. Did you take me to Landmark? And Tim Merritt, the administrator of Landmark, got in the airplane with me. Okay. The ambulance with me and the grocery man in Landmark. And they treated me like a queen there, I'm telling you. It was uh, <coughs> it was great. Matthew 35 through 40. For I was a hunger, and you gave me I was thirsty, and uh, you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, was it always hunger, or fed thee, thirsty, or gave thee drink? When saw thee a stranger, and took me in? 
or naked and clumsy, or would always be sick in prison and come unto you. And the king shall answer and say unto you, Verily, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. And that sums up what this church did. Um, at that point in Athens, different people came every day and stayed with me so that I wouldn't have to be by myself. Um, I still couldn't move in. So they took me by ambulance to Athens Regional. I had a CAT scan. And they decided they could take that network. And so that, that was good. And on the way back, we took the ambulance to Murphy's. <laughs> <laughs> and I had my first hand work. Uh, and so I, I had a, a great nurse. She's actually related to Jonathan Cantrell, um, Alicia's husband. And we called her Lord Tab Lisa. <laughs> but she became such a good friend of me, and she would always go with me to the doctor's appointment in the ambulance, and she would uh, take take me somewhere, Derek Queen and Tom somewhere, and we would wait in the ambulance, and the driver would go to me too. <laughs> so that that was more. Uh, the first time we went to Athens Orthopedic Clinic, they took me in through a back door. <laughs> yeah, they took me in the back door. But when we came out, they brought me out through the lobby. And the lobby had about this many people in it. And there's just an aisle that was new. And they <coughs> rolled me out on that journey. And everybody just stared. <coughs> And Lisa said, hey, let's wait. <laughs> <laughs> so I know those people thought that was terrible. She was a lot of fun. She took care of me. And uh, I had a lot of good nurses. Um, a lot of good people there. One of my physical therapists was named Angie. And Angie was originally from Carnival, Georgia. So we knew some of the same people. And uh, Angie was the occupational therapist who worked on my hand. She was determined that I would be able to go through the drive room and get my change. Because at first, my hand was like this and was on the And so she worked with me and worked with me. And I can probably do that. But she came up with all sorts of crazy things trying to help me. Some of y'all might have come a time or two and seen a basketball taped to my hand. I had a basketball taped to it. We tried hot wax. She would, uh, she did all kinds of things, just crazy things, trying to help me get some use back. And then we finally had an x-ray, and the bones had grown again. 25% um, of people who have a serious injury have what they call what those hypertrophic bone growth. And I'm um, one of them. So the bones in my arm grew together, and we were doing all that work for nothing. I even had a bone stimulator, um, everything you can name. So I had surgery uh, first to take out the external fit out of my foot. And I just love Dr. Johnson. I have three orthopedics in Atkinson. He's my ankle doctor. And uh, he, he's always smiling and happy. And so, they were aggravating me that they were going to take me to his office and he was going to take that thing out of my leg there. <laughs> now, I went all the way through and I wasn't happy about that. And they said, 
said, oh, well, maybe they won't take you to the hospital. Just give you a, uh, a local, you know. <laughs> Don't want that either. So I talked with him. And he said, yeah, I will put you to sleep. Don't worry about it. And I was still worried. Now I got into the, uh, op they rolled me into the operating room. And uh, he came in and was checking my foot out and I said, I'm not asleep. He said, no, I'm not asleep. <laughs> so I didn't know that they had done the surgery. They put me in recovery and there it was again. And I said, I'm not a flat kid. And he said, we've already done it. <laughs> But I was terrified they were going to jerk that thing out and be away. <laughs> um, one, of, one of my nurses um, was also a Methodist minister's wife. And she was great. I loved Catherine. And then I had another one um, who would bring me food. <laughs> If, if she baked cookies, she brought me some. If there were donuts in the nurse's lounge, she brought me some. Everything. A piece of her little boy's birthday cake. You know, she brought, she brought me everything she could find. And I had a great wound care nurse. Uh, I had open wounds on both sides, my ankle and my knee, when I got to my MR. And I had a really nice wound care nurse. She's the one that took that picture there of her leg. Um, she came in one, one morning and she said, it was Monday, she said, I was going to ask you a question today, but I got my answer. And I said, what's that? And she said, I was going to ask you if I could put you on my church prayer list. But yesterday I got to church and you're already on there. <laughs> and I said, where do you go to church? And it was somewhere in Norcross, the Luther somewhere. I had no idea how my name got on all these lists. But if you look through these books, they're full of cards for people I don't know. I got a card from Africa. They're, they're from people that just heard about me. And uh, when I got to Landmark, people wanted to meet me because they've never seen anybody with 49 fractures that lived. And so they would come to the room and meet me. And it was kind of overwhelming at first. But I finally got up. Um, they did a horrible thing to me. They put me in a swing. And I had all these pelvic fractures. So all the way of my body, went to my head and I screamed and I cried and it took a lot of more things to get over that first getting up out of the bed. But the next time um, there was a little guy named Sam and Sam would come and four of them. By this time I lost 37 pounds so I wasn't as heavy as I was before. But it's four of them, would, I'd take more things first. And then they would lift me and put me in a chair as close to my bed as they could get it. The first time I sat up 10 minutes and I had broken out in a sweat by the time it was time to go back to bed. But I increased so that I could sit up longer. And finally, my physical therapist and my favorite nurse, Lisa, came in and said, you're going to take a shower today. I world. But they brought in a wheelchair and they had a CVC pot. And they, the shower was level. They rolled me in the shower so that I was facing out. They took all my clothes off and they gave me a shower. First shower I had in about two. Another shot of morphine and that. <laughs> it felt good. <coughs> and 
then I, I was starting to get a little better and a little better. They were taking me to therapy in a wheelchair. Instead of coming to my room and doing therapy, I was going in a wheelchair. And one day, it was not the first time, but one of the first times, there was an older man in there. And part of our therapy was group therapy. And we had to throw a ball, you know, a big child's ball, and take it. <coughs> and so we were in a circle in our wheelchair, and we would throw the ball around. He wouldn't catch it. He wouldn't catch it. He wouldn't, he wouldn't cooperate at all. And when they tried to do individual therapy, he wouldn't do anything. So the next time um, I was going to therapy, um, Kelly, one of my physical therapists, said, if he's in here today, I want you to talk to him. Because he was in World War II, and he served on the submarine. And I was so excited. That was amazing. And so he wouldn't do anything. So she parked me next to him. And she said, I'm going to work with these over here. Y'all just sit here a minute. And so I asked him his name. And I told him not. And I said, I understand you were in the war. And I asked him a few more things. And I told him about me. And he, just, he wouldn't really talk. And uh, so it was time to throw the ball. And I said, I noticed the other day. And you didn't want to throw the ball. He said, no. I said, you know, he had had a stroke. He had had a stroke and was recovering. And I said, you know, that stroke is really horrible. And I'm sorry that you have to go through that. But you lived in a submarine. This is nothing. I've been in a submarine. I couldn't do that. You know, you can throw this ball. And the next time I saw him, he was walking. Not that I did, but God used me to talk to him. And he got to go home before I did. But he was determined he wasn't going to throw that ball. They wanted me to get ready to go. And one thing I had to be able to do, oh, I need to tell you something else. You know, one day I was in therapy, and I got back to my room, and Stacy's sister was there with me. It was her day, and uh, she said, a man came in and said he brought you your favorite drink. And I saw it on my table, and it was the biggest cup from Sonic I've ever seen, because I love Diet Terry Lime. And I said, who was it? And she said, the only thing I remember is Stephen. And I said, what did he look like? And she described him, and it was Stephen Farr. <laughs> <laughs> and he had come to see me and brought me this huge diet to your um, I did go through a really, really hard time with depression. Um, I didn't eat for a lot of days. They threatened to the see me too then, and I didn't care. So finally, they put me on appetite uh, stimulant, if you can believe that. <laughs> but I, I, I couldn't eat, and I was really, really bad at that point. But um, it took a lot of and so forth to get through that. One thing that's really interesting that did happen, one day these people came in, there was a girl and a boy and a woman, and they had a guitar. And Allison had told me about music therapy when she was in college, but I had no idea what it was. But they were doing music therapy, and it turned out that lady was their professor, and she was the wife of one of Allison's and the first song I did was a crazy mishmash 
and they called me Miss Macintosh. <laughs> so Allison had straightened him out. Hello, <laughs> it was to the tune of something else. But then they did Wonderful World. I don't know if y'all know that song, but um, what am I saying? And I was, I was so grateful to them. So every Tuesday, they were coming to sing to me. And that was, that was kind of funny. One of the things I had to do before I could leave was get a ride in the car. Now, in the meantime, y'all know what was going on here. Y'all had the big motorcycle <coughs> ride, start sailing all that for me. And, uh, there's a book that Linda wrote for me with pictures in it from that day. It's over there if y'all would like to look at it. And we had a twins' birthday party their first birthday party at Landmark. And that green cake that I had put in my car and that chicken base that I had put in my car was everywhere. You may can even see some of it in the pictures. But we had made that turtle cake, Michelle and I. She was practicing for their first birthday. And that cake is everywhere. And they couldn't understand. My niece said, everything in there smells like chicken food. But it was, it was a dark chicken base I bought. But um, y'all had the big ride for me, and I can never thank the men enough for doing that, and the women for the art sale. It was such a blessing to have y'all do that. And people wrote in it that we don't know. We don't know some of those people who signed that book. But we're very grateful. They started taking me outside, and um, I had been outside in months. This was June, and I got her first look of May, March. So I, I had been outside, and they started taking me outside to see if I could get in a car, because I had to be able to get in a car before I could go home. So. The nurses would take turns bringing their car to the door to see if I could get in. And we tried every car they had. We tried our cars. And uh, nothing would work. So Steve and Michelle went to the car lot. I could not bend either leg, really. I could bend this one some. But I had a hip replacement <coughs> in this ear. And it's ceramic because they didn't think I'd ever walk again. And they just put it in there to stabilize my head. Well, the head of it has now turned. And I have heterotopic bone growth all over my head. And I can't have surgery until that stops. So I couldn't really be in either lady. So Michelle and Steve went to the car line. And she tried getting in the car with her leg stiff. And she and I were saying hi. So she knew if she could get in the car with her leg stiff, I could get in the car. And they finally found two, a Cadillac and the car we have. <laughs> and they brought those cars. I tried SUV, I tried minivan, I tried everything I think except the auto or a Corvette, those kind of cars. <laughs> but um, I probably could get in that car. So Steve parked the car in the parking lot, and every day they would take me out and help me get in that car. And that was terrifying to be in the car. <coughs> but they would ride me around in the parking lot to help get me used to being in a car so that I could work my way up to being able to ride home. <coughs> and um, that's how we got the car we had. Because it's the only one Michelle could get in straight leg, except the Cadillac. But prior to the wreck, I had prayed that I'd be able to work less and spend more time with my family. Be careful what you pray for. In my mind, I was praying to spend more time 
when you're showing them the baby. But God had a different plan. And I got to spend time with eight sisters and Mom and Charles, Alice. So be careful what you pray for. Be specific. Um, Philippians 4 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be laid down unto God. So then I went home. That was terrifying. Um, I had finally come to be able to navigate the hospital a little bit. You know, every day almost was a new normal because I was learning to do things. The first time I stood up, I stood for 15 seconds, and that's all I could do. I eventually got to the point I could walk with a walker 75 feet. So then they let me go home. But going home was hard. It's been 108 days since I've been home. But as we turned on the Ward Creek Road, there was a sign almost. Every feet to feet, welcoming me home. And y'all made that sign. And it was wonderful. And y'all all took turns bringing us food. I got to go home the day before my 51st birthday. And it was wonderful. To a point. <laughs> um, <coughs> we, y'all all. Food every night and fed us. A lot of them came during the day and stayed with me and helped me. Um, but I was uncomfortable. I was in a lot of pain. It took 15 minutes for me to go to the bathroom from my bed, which is about as far as from here to the door. Not, not that long. Not in, not in the bed. Because I had both of these on my feet, one on each foot, every night. And I couldn't get up without help. Um, I slept with a wedge under my back. And I had all sorts of contractions on my arms. This, arm. um, this is one of the torture devices. They rigged up for me in Wake Forest. But it would take 15 minutes to go to the bathroom. And I had to have pain medication after. And it was hard. Um, Steve had put in bars in our bathroom and had gotten me a, a seat that's hard. Uh, they got me a shower bench that I could sit on and then someone would have to pick up my feet and turn me into the bathtub, start the water, <clears throat> and even help me get a dress. That burnt. I couldn't take a shower by myself. I still can't uh, stand up and take a shower. I still have to use the bench because I can't stand up very long. Um, but it was hard. I was in a lot of pain. And I didn't want to eat again. So Mama brought a case of it sure. And my ears started drinking that. Um, but it was really hard. I cried a lot that first week. I wanted to go back. It was so much easier to be in the hospital. Because I knew I'd do things there. And I was having a hard time at home. And then I started therapy. But the home care nurse was coming. Um, every other day to do wound care on my thighs and my foot. Um, <coughs> I almost lost my right foot. If it had been up to Michelle and my sister, I wouldn't have to. Because they said, less pain, less trouble, just take it off. But the doctors, they were, they were young. This is a teaching hospital. 
So um, the doctors said, we're going to call him Daddy. So they called him Daddy, who was a very old doctor. And he's got his foot and my ankle. Now when you rub the inside of my right foot, I feel it on the top. But I still have it. I still have my foot. Both my big toes had to have surgery after I came home. Um, I was going to therapy twice a week, and I saw some of y'all there. Um, I would have occupational therapy on my hand and arm for an hour, and I would do physical therapy for my whole body for an hour. And uh, I had it over here. Across from the hospital, uh, pro therapy, and I got to see Kate, and I saw Ken, and lots of other people that I knew. And a couple of times, different people came over and said, I just feel like I need to pray for you. Strangers. But they were praying for me right there. And uh, therapy was hard. It was really hard. But, um, I, I got pretty good at it. I could walk. And I, I stopped using a wheelchair, started using a walker. And one day, um, Lori, y'all who know Lori, sweetest physical therapist, she said, I think you can walk with a cane. And so she gave me a cane and helped me walk. And uh, I still have to walk with that. Hopefully, if I ever get to have the hip surgery, I won't have to. <coughs> the hip is just not behaving. And I have a big screw in this hip, and it's starting to give me a little trouble. So I don't know what's going to happen with this. But every day became a new normal, and sometimes it still is. Um, Steve got me a stool. I can sit in the kitchen and cook a little bit. So we have those one pot wonder kind of deals, or sandwiches, or cereal, popcorn. Um, and for all of you who are in my Sunday school class, you know how much I love Psalm 23. And it really did. Um, means even more to me than the wreck. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my hand with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Steve didn't know I was going to read that long ago when he said we'd come through the valley of Peter. Um, but we couldn't have done any of this without you. And uh, next week will be terrible. I'm pretty not <laughs> But Becky said, obviously, she wouldn't. <laughs> she also said it was divorce me. I said, if I divorce you, I can still go. <laughs> you know, we found out what friends are. We found out what people are faithful. The vast majority of you, at one time or another, made your way to Athens or Winston Salem Lake, and some of you many times. And you had your own we had a lot going on in this church at that time. People lost their jobs. 
that were dead in the family. And I wasn't there for you, but you've been there for me. And just in case you think it's over with, I still get to put her socks on her own. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. She can't get her boots on either. <laughs> These books are full as they to get well cards from all over the world. Many for you guys. Uh, the little door hanger on that is the kids who made for Ann. Uh, cards from the church family, Sunday school classes. Uh, somewhere in one of these is a, uh, it's like a baseball card from one of the Wood Brothers, whom I met while Ann was in the hospital. Uh, the Wood Brothers raised me up. They had a relative there from the tractor and turned over on him in the middle of the state. Uh, I don't think he survived. So it's tough to do. But you know, you guys have helped us through the worst time of our lives. And all we can do is just say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And that's not you. I understand uh, immediately after the accident, uh, Charles and Barnes uh, were. Uh, led a service for us, and there are just so many different ways that you guys helped us to this. Um, and we just came to thank you enough. Just know that God's used you to work with here. And family faith came together, praise for the least of one another, great thing I don't know. There in, I mean, I, I can't remember now how many surgeons they had. Seventeen. Seventeen at Wake Forest. But on more than one occasion, some of you were sitting there with me keeping me from all that was possible in the surgery. And I appreciate it so much. I know there's some ice cream back there. I see the cup of the ice cream. You know, I'm a big fan of ice cream. And, uh, what do you think? Maybe you should if you'd like to look at any of this stuff, you're welcome to. The, the picture books from the motorcycle ride, from the kids' first birthday party, all the get book cards, fortune devices, you're welcome to look. So as for me, I think we need to close the prayer and have some ice cream. Anybody in favor of that? Say amen. 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 Father, thank you so much for giving us this evening. And this opportunity to share. Thank you for the love you have for us. Thank you so much for giving us this evening and this opportunity to share. Lord, we thank you for Anne and for the miracle that you worked in her life with prayers that have been answered time and time again. The strength and the encouragement that a people of faith can come together and provide. And Lord, we just praise you tonight for walking with us through that valley in the shadow of death. Now, Father, we pray you continue to look over us, help us as we enjoy some time of fellowship, and may it be a great day and a great week ahead for all of us. For us in the name of Jesus Christ. Your Son, our Savior, and our Lord, we offer this prayer. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. I did forget to bring, I've got a big coat that big, that's stuffed full of prayer shawls that people made for me. And I got a lot of stuffed animals, too. Thomas confiscated purple there, and he still flips with it. <laughs> Thank you for coming and like I said, feel free to look around and have some ice cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs>